What's up everyone, Kuru here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we have a little bit of a different video. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot and I figure I just wanna make a video to create a discussion with you guys. See what your guys' opinion is will be on this topic. Uh, maybe will enlighten me a little bit. Uh, maybe the things I have to say, uh, you agree or not. But here's the deal. I really love tennis and I love being on the court. I love learning about tennis. You know, tennis is my livelihood, but in recent years, I find myself watching the live tennis less and less. I just don't get too excited about watching tournaments anymore. Maybe going and watching in person is really fun, but on TV, meh, don't, I don't know. There's, it, it isn't that exciting anymore for me. And I feel like tennis is becoming a little bit stale as a product. So my question is, is tennis as purely an entertainment product becoming more and more boring? And if so, is it doomed to fail if change doesn't happen anytime soon? I know this is a weird question to ask, but you know this is the sport that I love and I would love to see it uh, grow into something even better for the future. And I don't know if we're on the right path right now. So in this video, I'm going to try to highlight some of the key issues that I see with tennis right now and some of the ways that we could address it and improve it. And at the end, I'm gonna draw my own conclusions in terms of how I, you know, in a utopian scenario, how I would like to see tennis develop in the next like, 10, 20, 25 years. And I also wanna hear from you guys what you think uh, tennis is missing right now. And let's create a good dis discussion here at my Tennis HQ. So let's get right to it. Okay, so in order for us to answer these questions, we really need to look at tennis objectively. We need to remove our passion for tennis as tennis players, as tennis fans, and think about it as an, a purely an entertainment product. Tennis, sports in general, are entertainment products and they aim at generating revenue. The more eyeballs uh, glued to the TV or going to tournaments, the more money uh, the sport makes, the more money the, the players make. You know, it's, it's, ju it's just like a business in any other sense. So tennis as an entertainment product is not very exciting. Um, it is exciting for people who like tennis, but have you ever, you know, gone to a bar and seen a bunch of people just going crazy about a tennis match? Unless it's like Serena Williams or if someone like from your country, it's really rare to, to see that. And when you look at some of the TV ratings, things get pretty spooky. US, the US Open just lost 50% of its, of its ratings compared to last year. Obviously, there was no big three. Serena lost. Uh, but it really shows that the casual fan like didn't feel really compelled to tune, tune in. And we're in a pandemic. There's not a lot going on. You can watch maybe the NBA, but you know there wasn't a lot of sporting events, so you could have, most people could have watched it, but that just shows that as an entertainment product, tennis fails to bring casual fans, where you know myself, I'll go watch an NBA game, I'll go watch an NFL game, and I'm not even that big of an NFL fan or something, but I would go watch a game, it's fun, it's a, it's a cool, exciting, thing to do where I feel like tennis is not. It fails to grab people's attention that way. And we can't look at TV ratings and draw the conclusions to, to this topic because back in the day in the 80s, um, tennis used to bring way more eyeballs in, in, to you know, TVs, but but now it's, you know, it, we, it's a sign of times. People have Netflix and a billion different things to watch, but I just feel like the format of tennis and then tennis as an entertainment product is becoming just a little bit stale and a little bit boring and it's hard to engage a new fan base and i think uh, that's the problem number one which brings me to my next point that is format do we think that the current format is sustainable i don't i'm not necessarily talking about you know the scoring system like playing best of five or whatever it is even though it's all over the place, all the Grand Slams play a different way, it's kind of weird. Uh, but just tennis as a whole, it's a very unique situation. First of all, the season is way too long. It starts in, the, in pretty much in December, that you have to go to Australia, and you play all the way to November. So it's 11 months long. No other sport plays there have a, has a season this long. So it's really hard to keep the fan base engaged for 11 months when by the end of it, players aren't even 
there anymore. They're just kind of like going with the flow. Like they play some of these tournaments after the US Open. No one really watches, to be honest. It's like, yeah, fans watch it, but it's like, you know, it creates no buzz. And speaking of fan base, tennis has one of the oldest fan bases out there. The, the average tennis fan is 61 years old, which means tennis is failing to modernize and bring a lot of attention to the youth. Yes, there's a lot of people who play tennis, but th that sort of engagement that you see, that passion that you see, I'd say from you know someone who really supports a team, an NFL team, an NBA team, a soccer team, we, so it's just really hard to find that in tennis. And, and I'm not the only one saying this. Patrick Moratoglu talked about this problem recently when he was explaining his reasoning behind creating the UTS during the COVID break. He said, for many years, I have been worried about the future of tennis. The average age of a tennis fan is 61 years old, which is very old for a fan base. Tennis is failing to renew its fan base. And that's very worrying because the future doesn't look bright. Now, you can agree or disagree with, with Morato Glue, but the fact is tennis is not that exciting for the casual fan. It is long, it is complicated, it's hard to follow for too many people, for too big of an audience. And on top of that, because tennis has this root of being a gentleman's sport, it fails to be engaging with the fans. Um, you know, you, obviously you go and watch and you know, you sit there in silence and you clap in between points. Yes, it gets exciting. You watch those long matches, those battles, the crowds, crowd gets into it. It does happen, but it does not happen as often as it happens in any other sport. In any other sport, always crowded and you know, two fan bases just going at each other is different. Obviously, this is an individual sport, but at the end of the day, it is not very engaging like nobody goes to a bar and watches a tennis match you know people go to bars on Sundays to watch football to watch the NBA um, you know there's a tons and tons of eyeballs watching those, those games but tennis matches they they just don't really engage uh, with a casual fan again let's exclude us fans people who love tennis and just think about a product that reaches a bigger audience and tennis struggles to do that so we need to find ways to modernize tennis while still keeping its roots of being like a cool sport a gentleman's sport but in a way making it you know way more engaging for more people for more casual fans for someone who just wants to tune in to something and have some fun another big problem that i see with tennis is affiliation what i mean by that is that it's really hard to create a connection between player and fan base, with the exception of the big three, Serena, Naomi, a couple, a, few, a handful of players, most, most tennis players attract very few eyeballs to the TV or even to the stands. And it's pretty obvious that one way to do this is to have more team events. We've seen it, Labor Cup, it's been successful, ATP Cup was success, successful. Why? Because it's easier to get a fan base to be behind a team you know it's easy for me to be like okay I'm gonna be team rest of the world I'm from Brazil so team rest of the world I want them to take it to Europe you know what I mean and then people go and watch it and it's easy to create that affiliation I watched this firsthand I was at Brisbane this year and I was able to watch uh, Serbia versus South Africa for the ATP Cup and all of a sudden obviously they, Serbia has Novak Djokovic in the team but they all the second player was Dusan Lajovic and he was being treated like a god. The fans were going crazy about him. But when you put him on an individual setting, and no disrespect to Dusan because he's an unbelievable player, he's a top 100 player, but most people on an individual tournament don't really you know, sweat it if they didn't get to watch Dusan, right? But at, in that situation, in that team setting, fans were able to really get behind him. And maybe just that one event got him a bunch more fans than he had before that people were like oh my god we need to support this guy obviously the serbian fans but we need to create this this connections between players and fans because otherwise people just go to to big tournaments and they just care about watching the big three and the big matches and the night matches but they don't really um but the casual fans will never really really be too 
excited. So like, you know, a casual fan will go out of their way to probably support, you know, their their country or, you know, Labor Cup, whatever it is, but they won't really go out of their way to just watch the number 80 in the world, even though it's for their country. It's a weird thing in tennis. So again, that affiliation, it's hard to come from an individual setting, just as it is now, just playing ATP events, 250s that barely anyone is watching, it's probably losing money. But in team settings, um, it's much easier to create that affiliation. So I think, you know, it's proven that this, this is a good way to do it. And I think we need more and more of that in tennis. And the last thing I want to bring up, and I, it's not even something I believe in, it's more like I just want to throw it out there to see what you guys have to think about it, but are tennis players boring? Um, and we can look at it in two ways, boring game styles and boring personalities, right? Like, do we lack excitement from, from tennis players? Do, do we, is everyone a little bit robotic? Um, do we lack charisma, I guess? Uh, you know, obviously the older guys, Federer and Nadal, they have, they're so established and, and, you know, with, with their fan bases, I'm not really worried about them, but I'm, you know, the, the new generation, obviously we have some characters, we have, you know, the Nick Kyrgios of the world, and liking him or not, he does bring eyeballs. People know him, people know him outside of tennis. People, you know, kind of want to go watch that guy because we, they don't know what's going to happen when he, he gets on the court. And, you know, for all his, his faults, and, you know, for not being, like, I would say, like, a great example for non-talented kids who try to play like Nick, um, he is exciting to watch, and I think he's good for tennis, but most guys, they are a bit boring. Like, you just, yeah, you know what I mean? They're good players, but you don't really, you know, create that, like, connection of, like, oh, this guy's cool, or this, this girl is whatever. Like, it, it's just, I think that's lacking. And then the second part is the game style. It does feel like everyone's playing sort of the same way, right? Everyone is a good baseliner, everyone moves well, everyone serves well. So I feel like everyone kind of plays the same way. We have a few different guys now. Medvedev is very unique. Again, Nick is very unique the way he plays. But again, most guys, you know, solving everything with power, consistency. I think there has been, you know, a development in the last like few years in tennis. Fed came in and then Rafa came in with his game style and then Novak obviously took it to a whole new level of consistency and moving around the court and then we've had this epic battles of two really physical guys dwelling it out but is it really exciting to watch unless it's like a final that lasts six hours um, I don't know so it's, it's it's a question that we you know we just need to throw it out there I don't believe it I you know, I love watching, you know, the, some of the new guys, they're, they're good. Um, but at the same time, like, I just don't really feel like really a connection, the connection that I had as a kid with Fed that I would spend hours and hours and hours on YouTube watching highlights of Fed. I mean, I was kind of crazy about it. I just don't know if the newer generation is creating that with younger kids. Maybe they are. Uh, but I, I just really know that Nick gets a lot of that, but I just don't know, you know, many players who are having that sort of impact with the newer generation. And then it goes back to everything that we said earlier about, you know, it, it is an older fan base, it's failing to modernize, it's all these things. Um, and maybe it is, I wouldn't say the player's fault, but it's, you know, they're in a monopoly. It's only the ATP controlling. They have to play in this calendar in a certain way. They have to abide by certain rules. And maybe that isn't the best way to engage uh, fans and to modernize the sport. So something to think about. I don't necessarily, again, don't necessarily believe it. I just know that most tennis players, besides like, you know, Fad, Rafa, Novak, if they walked, you know, down the street here, probably wouldn't be recognized. So. I don't know. I don't know who's to blame on that one, but I just know that it, it is. I feel like we're lacking that a little bit um, with the tennis players and with just the system that we have in place these days. All right, so what would I do if I could fix all this, right? Um, I think the first thing would be a shorter season. I don't think there's 
that much engagement after the US Open. I think we have some good tournaments and I th obviously the, the Asia swing brings a lot of money into the tour, but I feel like the players after this Open, everyone is just a little bit over it and it's, it shows. And then, you know, it becomes not very exciting for, for, for the fan as well. If, you know, if you're, if you're watching someone who's not very into it, it's hard for us to get into it. So I think a, a shorter, more condensed season than maybe, you know, January through September. And you can still have the same amount of tournaments. And if anything, with having more tournaments, more players would be able to play in bigger events. You know, guys, it's pretty obvious that tennis is very deep these days. Guys who are 150, 180, 200 are making deep runs and deep runs, but making it to third, fourth round of Grand Slams. So there's a lot of depth, but there's not a lot of opportunity that way. So if you have more tournaments in a, or the same amount of tournaments in a condensed period of time, you know, the, the, the entry list will run a little bit. You're gonna have, you know, guys who are 150, 160 playing uh, those events, making a better livelihood. And I think it would be more appealing for, you know, parents and anyone who's thinking about like, should I put my, my kids in tennis? Maybe they'll be able to look at tennis and be like, okay, well, there's a, an actual good path for them to I mean, make a living in the future. And obviously there's college tennis, all this stuff. But um, I think that is the first thing we need to do. Shorter, shorter, more condensed um, season. And then number two, with a condensed season, uh, you'd have all these months, maybe from like late August, September, all the way through Australia, that would be technically off. But during those off seasons, you could have a bunch of leagues, a bunch of team events where, you know, you can have an Australian league, a South American league, league uh, European. Europeans play a lot of the club matches uh, in Europe to make some extra money. And they, they really like doing that. And obviously, um, we have college tennis here and I know the team format is really exciting. I think a lot of people want to see uh, this team format. So I think you could have more fun, engaging uh, event, events that could be experimental, kind of like the UTS during that time. So players can still be engaged, can still compete because tennis, you need to stay sharp. You can't just take, you know, three months off. You still need to like kind of stay match fit, but you play, you know, in a, just to make some more money. and and to you know create maybe some different engagement with the crowd try some new things i think that would be a good time to experiment things and not fully you know do it on a, in a grand slam that all of a sudden people will be going crazy about like oh the format can it can be changed people like you know their heart change doesn't come easy to everyone so i think again with a shorter season you could have all these experimental events team different formats all the stuff and I mean, and, and we're seeing from, you know, we saw from Morato Glue, Noah Rubin just announced he's working on creating some sort of a, of a, a, a tour like that where, you know, fans are gonna be more engaged. Um, I'm actually gonna try to talk to him about it and maybe make a video. But, you know, there's definitely a put, I'm not the one who's, only, who's thinking about that. There's a lot of people who are thinking about it and are doing things. And I think we need to, you know, keep him an open mind um, about those different formats just so we can keep modernizing and pushing tennis in a new and good direction. So this is it for this video. Uh, I know it was kind of random and it's a lot of me talking. Yeah, I don't, don't know if you guys wanted to hear it, but I think it's important uh, to create these discussions because, you know, as tennis fans, we want our sport to, you know, move in the right direction. And right now, the future looks a little bleak. I don't know if we are. I'm a little bit scared about what's going to happen once the big three is gone. Yes, there's a lot of new guys, younger generation, but you know if they don't really do well until before those guys retire, is it, you know there's is there an asterisk to what they they accomplish in their in their careers? So tennis is in a little bit of a crossroads. We're seeing a lot of you know things happening, players union, people complaining about the ATP. There's a lot of things going on. So it's not like, you know, everything is, you know, perfect and all just roses right now. So, you know, I think it is time for us to start thinking a little bit more deeply about these issues. And I think the fans play a really big part of it. Like, what do you guys want to watch? What is something uh, that would be engaging? Did you guys like, like the UTS? 
Um, you know, there's all these sorts of uh, things that, you know, I think people are passionate about in tennis and they can, they want to create and they want to improve the sport. Uh, UTR is also another, uh, you know, in UTR league. Um, there, there's all sorts of possibilities that can happen and I think, um, you know, we need to experiment. And I want to hear from you guys, what do you guys think of this, the things I brought up, what did I miss, what is something that like concerns you about tennis that um, makes you think that tennis might not, you know, be great in a long term. And now I want to hear, and now I want to hear from you guys, what do you guys think uh, about the, the subjects that I brought up um, and maybe I missed stuff that you guys can comment down below. You guys can discuss with each other nicely. Let's not start fights on the comment session. But I'm really curious to, to hear what you guys are, have to say. Um, and I'll be definitely checking out the comments. So make sure you leave a comment below. Also subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, give it a like button because it really helps the channel. And let's start this discussion. I'll see you guys on the next one.